All right, boom. What is going on, everyone? To those of you who are returning, welcome back. To those of you who are here for the first time and you're new, welcome in. My name is Gerardo. We're going to be talking about hex in this video and more specifically covering the Gaussian channel, which is a model that I actually developed a while back, a few months ago, and decided, you know, I was like, you know what, it's time, it's about time to drop it. I've been keeping it secret, quote unquote, for far too long. And it recently hit a certain target, so I might as well drop it, right? So let, let's go ahead and talk about this Gaussian channel. One of the reasons why I really like this chart is because it has mathematical significance. If you have heard of the Gaussian distribution, also known as the normal distribution, also known as the bell curve, then you might have some idea of what this model, this chart, this channel might look like. Uh, but we're gonna we're gonna show you in about a minute because I want to describe a little bit to those of you who aren't really familiar with what that means. We're just gonna touch on this graphic for a little bit. So all this really tries to describe is how far away certain values are from the average, right? Because you have a data set, and let's just say it's um, the age of a person in a certain city, right? So you have a data set with numbers from you know, zero for zero year olds all the way to hundred year olds, for example. We'll just use that. So you have a data set of a bunch of zeros, 20s, uh, 82s, like just a bunch of numbers. And so you can get certain data from that set. You can get certain, um, you know, certain metrics, like what's the average, what's the median, what's the mode and all that. So you, you probably are familiar with these terms if you took a statistics or a probability class somewhere in the, the far off lands far off sands of your mind somewhere in there maybe but in general what a a gaussian distribution also known as a bell curve like this what it attempts to do is look at again like i just said what is the average distance here this is the tricky the tricky vocabulary here it, it tries to find what the average distance of any random value is of that data set from the average of the data set so like, let's say in that example we gave of ages, the average age is 35 or something. Well, that's just an average, right? It's kind of an abstraction. Technically, you don't even need to have 35 year olds in the data set to get an average of 35. So keep that in mind, right? You don't actually need the average to be an element of the data set because it's kind of an abstraction of the data set. Anyways, point being, um, so let's say the average is 35, and then on average, how far away is someone's age from 35? That would be your standard deviation, right? So it might be something like, you know, it might be something like five. So that would mean that 68% of the population is between the average minus the standard deviation and the average plus. So in our case, if we have an average age of 35 and standard deviation is five years, then 68% of your population is between ages 30 and 40 right five on in either direction and you can continue doing this right in the same example then you would say 95 percent of your population here is between mu minus two sigma and mu plus two sigma all that is is average minus two standard deviations or average plus so it's it's reflected symmetrically across across both sides all that really would say is well 95 percent of your population is between um ages 25 and 45 Notice how we added or added an extra five to one tail end and subtracted five from the other tail end. So you're basically just broadening your range and saying, okay, more and more of our population or more and more of our data set falls within this range. Okay. And this is a very, um, a very powerful distribution to use in different contexts and it's very useful, but with that kind of context out of the way, let's, let's see if we can apply it to our, our hex chart. And so, before we actually do that, let's look at the regression rainbow. And there's a reason I'm going to point this out. Okay. Actually, let's look at the fair value chart because I wanted to touch on this too. We're going to revamp this model, by the way, this is some, some people in, in the telegram group pointed out, uh, pointed out a few things and, and they have, they have a good point that this model kind of sticks out like a sore thumb in the sense that it reuses something from another model where you don't usually see that. Uh, on this website, right? It just basically reuses the midline from the regression rainbow, this green midline. 
and it gives a title, right? I titled this model fair value, but it's really just a lifetime moving average, right? I described it in end day moving average. It's all described up here, but I have some ideas for this and it ties into what I'm going to talk about. So that's why I'm bringing it up. Okay. But what I went ahead and did a while back is I took this green, this green line basically. And I asked the question on average, right? Assuming this is like a midline or a sort of average value, uh, it, right? Even though the pink is actually more like your average. See, this is why I'm bringing this up because I'm going to build another model on top of what I'm going to show you here. It, it's all coming together quite nicely, actually. So expect an update. But what I'm trying to get at is I asked myself the question, what is the average distance of price for, um, what's the average distance between price and this green curve, right? And so you get a standard deviation and then you can do See, in the general sense, you would do plus a standard deviation and minus a standard deviation, and that would give you a nice little range. Because we're doing this in a log scale, I, I took a spin on, on, um, on getting this channel. So again, instead of doing min plus and minus the standard deviation, I did divided by and multiplied by. So okay, there's still inverse operations, right? They still reduce and amplify. However, on a log scale, it gives you something much cleaner because when I was doing the, the, just the plus and the minus, it would give you, um, curves that would diverge. They pretty much, uh, go off in, in opposite directions. So they didn't really give you insight at all. However, when you do the multiplication and division, you get a really clean channel. So six minutes in, and we're going to show you the chart. That chart is this, it might look super familiar because it uses the same color scheme as the regression rainbow. So let's just zoom in a tiny bit. Let's do 110% just to kind of describe what we did here uh, with the visual aspect uh, also in front of you. So again, we took the same green curve of the regression rainbow and I asked, all right, what's the average, um, average kind of magnitude away from, from the, uh, from that green curve. So what is the average, what is the average ratio from price on any given day to the green curve? And it turns out it's about 1.26. So that means on something like this, more or less it's this, um, this kind of large chunk of your data, 68%. I'm not sure if it actually applies again, cause we're using ratios as opposed to uh, differences here. So that's the caveat, but nonetheless, visually it, it looks, it looks good in the sense that the majority of your data is within your, your channel, right? Where here we simply did multiplied by a standard deviation where the standard deviation is defined by ratios versus differences. I hope that makes sense. If not, all you really have to know is that this is a sort of, I'm, I'm calling it the Gaussian channel because of the mathematical way we did it again, these first two, this blue and this yellow are one standard deviation away. Purple and orange are two standard deviations away and red and pink are three standard deviations away. Meaning if you look at three standard deviations, you should pretty much be encapsulating 99.7% of your data within the channel. And it might not be exactly 99.7, but it's the majority of it, right? So this is kind of a rough, uh, sort of a rough Gaussian model, but I like it because Similar to the regression rainbow, it gives you upper and lower bounds. But the reason I think this kind of has um, its own sort of utility is because price can actually break these upper and lower bounds, right? Versus on the regression rainbow, we actually, we, we fit the model to the maxima themselves, right? So when we do that and then we, you know, we show you the model, price doesn't necessarily break beneath it very often at all, right? Like you have this one little event right here, but for the most part, since you're fitting to these minima and these maxima, price stays more or less encapsulated in it. However, this gives you a little more wiggle, wiggle room, if you've noticed, where price can actually break beneath it. So this gives you, it compresses it, right? It compresses the channel a little more to where if we were to break beneath this red curve, which is not the exact same as this red curve on the regression rainbow, then you could say, okay, if we hit this, this is very, it's a bullish signal in the sense that you might want to be buying at these red levels to give you an idea. Let's turn on compare mode for this chart real quick. Just go to chart style, compare mode, easy. 
select out of it and you can see that red is currently sitting at around seven cents or so, 6.7 cents. So that would be a major buy signal in my opinion if we were to ever hit red on this chart. And again, this signal on this chart would come before a signal on this chart if we were to reach either extreme. Uh, for example, like I was saying, 6.7 cents on the Gaussian chart, whereas it's 5.6 cents on the a regression rainbow. So clearly the 6.7 cent signal would come before a 5.6 cent signal. And so you might have an edge in that case, right? You're kind of front running. Um, this one, right? This pink level is at about 97 cents, which is a signal that would come before the pink level on the regression rainbow, which is at a dollar and 16 cents. So again, you sort of compress it a little more. It allows the data to exit the upper and the lower sort of boundaries, but then again, that gives you a signal before the regression rainbow. So I thought it was cool. Now, one of the reasons I brought up the fair value model earlier is because I'm realizing that instead of using that sort of um, exponential fit midline, which is this green curve, this green line, instead of using this to get the data necessary for this channel, I think it'd be cool to actually use the, what I've been calling the fair value, which again is described up here, is simply a lifetime moving average or, or an end day moving average. We're on day seven, it's a seven day moving average. On day 100, it's a 100 day moving average. On day, what data point are we at now? Data point 616, it's a 616 day moving average, which currently sits at around 20 cents, right? So it's a lifetime moving average. Um, in theory, it should become less volatile over time because you have a bigger data set across what you're averaging, right? Um, but if we had an explosive move where things just went parabolic and vertical, then you could see the this pink curve start having more curvature versus you see how it's just kind of been flat. Not flat, I should say, but very um, steady, right? Like steadily increasing. You don't see much uh, real real concavity shifts or you don't see it go go wild like it was in the beginning when it was a shorter term moving average. So it's a dynamic MA, uh, but that, that's kind of the model for you. And what I, what I was getting at was if we used the Gaussian kind of, what would we call it? The Gaussian channel. If we applied a Gaussian channel to this lifetime MA, I think it'd be more mathematically significant. So we might want to try that, right? I, I went ahead and fit it to something else. So I'll go ahead and show you that real quick. Um, here is it on this chart. Oh man, I think I just lost that chart. <laughs> Hold on. Is it on the regression rainbows tab? I think it's in this tab. Pretty sure, almost certain. There we go. So this is a lifetime MA channel. It's not with the Gaussian uh, math applied to it, but I'm kind of realizing on stream right now that that is probably the move because like I was saying earlier, this attempts to describe the average distance from an average, whereas the midline, it's not really an average, right? That green curve is a regression, right? The red curve is regression and then the green curve is a multiple of the regression. So it's, I guess it's fine to use that, but I think it'd be much better to do this, right? Because again, this is actually a, a mathematical average, so it makes more sense. And um, these upper bounds were simply fit to the highest overextension multiple and lowest underextension multiple. So that's why it fits perfectly. But again, with something like, uh, like the Gaussian model I just showed you, then we would have upper and lower bounds on this chart that would actually be able to break above as well as beneath. So next video will probably be on that. And we'll, we'll call it, we'll have to come up with a clever way of coming up with it like a dynamic Gaussian channel, dynamic moving average Gaussian channel. I don't know, the terminology is sometimes kind of kind of difficult to come up with, like the nomenclature, I should say. But yeah, this is sort of your lifetime MA channel. Um, excuse me if my thoughts are kind of all over the place. That, that's really what it's like inside my mind. You guys get the luxury of organized thought in the form of nice videos with thumbnails and specific topics. But for the most part, this is what it's like inside my brain, just all over the place. So excuse that, but hey, you get an inside uh, behind the scenes look at what goes on in there. But yeah, I mean, the reason I like this chart and I'll like it more once we apply the Gaussian model to it, the Gaussian math is because 
again, it's a lifetime moving average. So at any moment, it's an average of its lifetime. Something about that, something about that speaks to the math side of me. I don't know exactly why. Um, and that's rare, right? Because I can usually explain exactly why um, I do the things I do here. But I guess I've rancid on enough. This, um, this, a version of this will probably be what replaces this. So say your goodbyes to the fair value model, but do not worry, do not fret because it will be similar. It will be similar. This pink curve will, is more or less, it's exactly this yellow curve, right? So we just kind of recolored them and gave you bounds as opposed to something like this, which we use as a regression rainbow curve, right? And we want to, again, I'm just kind of repeating myself at this point, but that's pretty much what I want to do is we're going to apply the Gaussian math to this uh, lifetime moving average, this yellow curve, and give you different bounds that would well, look similar to this, but these bounds will probably be, be compressed, right? Like I was saying, where price can go above and beneath, and it'll be kind of a, a, a faster signal. It'll come quicker than something like this. So that'll be the next update. And yeah, that's pretty much all I have for you in this video. Actually, we have something else, right? We're bouncing nicely off of our I mean, we saw the video yesterday. Are we ready for takeoff? It, it looks pretty, pretty good to me. I mean, look at that candle that just closed nice and green. And we are obviously 24 hours away from tomorrow's close. But this is looking good. If we break this, it'll be our highest candle close to date, right? If we get above this 19 cent level. So we are flirting, definitely flirting with all time highs. And I guess I can finish by showing you guys this video we dropped just now. Already has 250 views, not bad. Is that right? Reload it. Yeah, 250 views. So I made this last night. I was a little bored. Um, thought it was kind of funny. Let's share it with you guys. We all know Hex flipped Doge. Never came back. That head wobble though. We know Hex flipped BNB, and that was. Definitely a time to celebrate. Current day. Haha, <laughs> 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 you see? Okay, so go ahead and share that if you want. Um, yeah, I thought it was, I, it was a lot funnier last night when I was tired of making this at like 2 a.m. But um, the, the guys who got the first access to this meme video are the guys in t.me forward slash looking to hex. So join that group if you haven't already. We're already uh, popping. We already have 221 members in there. It's really just been a few days. We recently enabled the chatting feature literally like just a couple days ago. Uh, we have some good mods now. So we can um, pretty much uh, have a ball in there. Yeah. So keep keep it mainly to the look and hex models, ideas, charts, videos, all that. We have pinned messages at the top so you can have an idea of the general rules of conduct, what the group is for, what to do, what not to do, be being wary of um, obviously people trying to take advantage of, of people in groups. So everything's really here. Uh, people are already enjoying this. We have discussion, discussions running, like people are enjoying this. Uh, we, we've had some really good discussions, especially early on. People were asking some great questions. We already have memes in there. We have we have it all. So join if you'd like. Uh, follow on Twitter as well. Twitter.com forward slash Gerard Dog. This first link in the description. Not first, but it's in the description. Also, the look into Hex um, Twitter. Right? We're already at 620. This is nuts, right? Before I started making videos, I didn't even have 620 on my personal account. I just had like two or 300. And now like this account, which it just represents the website. It's awesome that it's growing. You guys are awesome. I appreciate all the support. Leave your questions below, suggestions, all that good stuff. I always appreciate it. I attempted to put my laptop in silent mode so you guys can't hear the whirring as much. I know there was like white noise in the background. But yeah, always attempting to optimize. Um, I appreciate you watching. Subscribe if you like this kind of technical and quantitative analysis on Hex, Pulsion, all of that. Some interesting updates on Pulse, PX, we're calling it Hex now. So yeah, there will be some topics for some future videos. Those are some hot topics for sure. And I definitely have them on my mind all the time. So stay tuned and I'll catch you in the next video. Peace.